Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be installing this aux power control system in my Toyota 4Runner. Now, a lot of you guys already know I have a Blue Sea circuit system and switches in my Toyota 4Runner for all my light bars and all my accessories. What this aux beam system aims to do is it's gonna replace a lot of those switches and relays and all that wiring that's needed to get those things to run. Basically, there's gonna be a box in the engine bay that controls everything, and you're just gonna hook this switch up into your cab to control all those accessories. It should make the wiring a lot cleaner and also make it easier to add accessories down the road. Now, this is a Chinese knockoff. It's made by Oxbeam. They did send this out to me for me to test and also review it for them. So I did get this for free. I will let you guys know my opinions about this at the end of the video. Like I mentioned before, I did have a Blue Sea system here with all the wires going into it, going to these relays that I've already removed. I wanted to spare you guys all of that and basically start from a fresh system and show you guys what it's like to install one of these systems. Now, if you guys are wondering how much wiring I ended up taking out of my vehicle, this is the Blue Sea system here, as well as all the relays and all the wiring to the cab to power everything up. So you can see there's quite a bit of stuff in here. So all of this stuff here is gonna be replaced with the Oxbeam system. Let me show you guys what's included in the system. All right guys, this here is a system. It comes in a box like this. You can get it in different configurations. You can get a six gang model or an eight gang model. This one happens to be the eight gang model. I highly suggest you get the six gang one because that one's gonna fit a little bit better in the Toyota 4Runner. I'll show you later in the video. But you can see here it comes with all kinds of stickers that you can put onto this control panel. So basically, depending on what you're running, you can decide what stickers to put on here and which bank. And you can see it's pretty much got everything you ever would need. Uh, one thing that is missing is maybe the winch, I noticed. So I won't be able to hook up my winch controller to this. But outside of that, it looks like it covers pretty much everything. Obviously it comes with the control panel. This actually mounts in the vehicle. There's a little wire here um, that connects to this side. As you can see here, this wire is a lot smaller and it's much easier to run through the cab. And this is the only wire you're gonna to need to run through the cab to connect the system. Some instruction manuals and you can see all the stuff that's included. We'll take a look at this later. This is the actual control box itself. So it has all the relays and fuses hooked up to this thing. You can't really see the relays, but they're somewhere in there. And you can see there's eight banks on this one. Like I said, I would definitely suggest you get the six bank one unless you need an eight. This wire here is to actually turn on the system. So they do provide a add a fuse here that you would tap into like your ignition or something. So that way this system doesn't always stay on and it only turns on when you have the key in the ignition. Now there is a downside to this and I'll talk about it later but that's how you would power the system on. And the other end of this cable connects to this here, which turns on the box. They also give you screws and bolts you'll need for the job. Some heat shrink wrap underneath here. You'll see they also give you some power cable. Looks like this is eight gauge or so. Comes with a fuse block and there's a 60 amp fuse in there. Also comes with the ground cable as well. Here it comes with spare fuses and then spare fuses for the block itself. And then under here, you can see there's some mounting hardware for the control box itself. This is if you want to flush mount it, and this is if you want to mount it and have it be able to swivel. I don't know if I'm gonna use these yet, but we'll see what happens when I get to that point. And then also under here, there's some zip ties as well. And then under this block, you can see here, there's a little sticker that says there's a mounting bracket under here. So this is so that you can mount it to the uh, firewall or the fender or something, and then you can put the box on top or you can mount it upside down and put the box this way. Probably not gonna be using this as I'm just gonna mount it on my existing plate that I have over there. So that's pretty much everything that comes in the box. Now you're not gonna need a lot of tools for this job. I have some wire strippers, a Phillips head to put some of the wires in, a 10 millimeter to take off the battery or whatever size you need, some electrical tape, and something to fish the wire through. And then these are some optional things you might need for your installation if you decide to go a little bit more crazy but I'm gonna be using some double-sided tape probably to mount things, um, some drill bits so I can mount it on my plate, some markers and stuff, and then if you want, heat shrink and some wire connectors. 
All right, guys, before you guys get a little too carried away, this stuff is made in China and it is not high quality. So you got to make sure you actually test the system before you put it into your truck and go through the hassle of all that. So I'm going to go ahead and just hook everything up with the supplied stuff that they gave me. I'm not going to be using some of this stuff, but I want to make sure that everything works before I go through the hassle of running things through the firewall. Uh, I don't really want to connect everything to my terminals right now. So I'm going to use these clamps to help me out to hold the wire in place so I can test it and make sure everything works. All right, guys, I got pretty much everything hooked up here. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Got the uh, long wire hooked up to the control as well as the box here. The last wire to connect is this red one here that comes out of the box. And this one, like I said, it's to be hooked up to something so that only turns on when the car is on. So right now I don't really care. I'm just gonna hook it up to the positive and pretty much that should light up this panel here. And you probably can't see that that well, or maybe you can. Um, but you can see everything seems to be working. Now one thing I'm going to also do is actually check the circuits on here and you can do that with just a voltmeter or if you have one of your wires handy. This is from my front light bar here. Um, you can actually hook it up to one of these and turn on the power. But since I'm a little paranoid, I'm going to turn on every single circuit and check it with a voltmeter to make sure that I get 12 volts on each of these. I'm going to spare you guys the time, but that's something you should probably do to make sure that every single bank works properly. All right guys, now that we've confirmed everything is working, which is great, we can proceed with the install. So earlier I had my blue C system sitting right here on top of this fuse block. I'm probably gonna do the same thing here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the holes here, drill it out so I can mount this box on here, just like I did with my circuit breaker here. Since I already have a circuit breaker that's rated for 100 amps, which I actually need, I'm not gonna be using that 60 amp wire that they gave me, and I'm just gonna be using the existing wiring that I had. Now this here is just a piece of plastic that I cut out to shape and I'll put a link down for you guys where you guys can find that. And you can see it's just velcroed in on the bottom here on top of this fuse block. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark this real quick and drill the holes out and then put the bolt and nut in so that way it can secure this box to this plate and the velcro will secure it to the engine bay. Now you could use the other bracket that it came with and try to fit it in somewhere over here. I don't know if the hood's really going to close with this EVAP system in the way. Uh, you may choose to put it back here and along the firewall, but then your wire would have to run all the way around. I like it right here because it's going to be a lot cleaner and a little bit easier to get to in case something happens. All right, I just got my box mounted. Just drilled those two holes and just used the supplied hardware and just put the 10 millimeter nut on top and it's a Phillips on the bottom and just screwed it on there. You can see here it is quite secure now. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish up the wiring here. I'm going to hook up my 100 amp 4 gauge wire here to this circuit breaker. It's just the same wire I had before. And then I made this new wire to go from this side all the way over to here now, since it's a different location than the blue C box. And then they do supply these bolts for you guys to connect to the box here. The breaker is off, so nothing is powered right now. I also have the negative connect disconnected as well. And then also for my ground wire, I made a new wire as well that goes to my marine post here. Again, you could easily use the existing stuff that was provided in the kit, but since I have this, I'm going to be using this. All right, you guys, we got everything buttoned up, tightened up these bolts on top here. These are 14 millimeters and everything is rock solid now. What I'm going to do now is start hooking up my accessories. One thing the manual says, and it's not very clear, is Banks 1 and 2 have a total of 30 amps, which doesn't make any sense because it has a 20 amp fuse on it on number 2 and a 30 amp on number 1. And number 5 has a 30 amp fuse. My guess is that they meant 1 and 5 probably have 30 amps total. I don't know. Um, and then the rest, pro the rest probably have 20 amps. But it also says in the manual 3 through 8 have 20 amps total, which doesn't make any sense. So what I'm going to do is, since my roof light bar has the highest output, I'm going to put that on bank number 5 because that has a 30 amp fuse. And then my bumper light bar, I'm going to put on 1. It only draws about 15 amps. And then the rest on some of these uh, smaller circuits. And then I'm going to change out the fuse to make sure they're the proper size. Now the nice thing about this, like I mentioned, is you can run these black and white wires straight from the light bar into this box and just make sure you have the proper gauge wire obviously for the accessory you're running most likely it's going to be and you're going to run it straight into one of these banks and you can also see here the banks are labeled negative and positive so just put it in the right screw here all right guys we are all done here 
Got my bumper hooked up, roof light bar, and then my two rear light bars. The rest I'm just gonna leave blank for now. And if I decide to add new stuff like ditch lights or rock lights or whatever, I can get that in there really easily now. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run these two wires here into the cab. Here you can see I've already taken apart the panel here. This is held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. You can take that out with a deep socket. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is underneath there, there's a bunch of wires going through the firewall. You can just stick this wire snake through there, just like you see here. And once you do that, you'll be able to tie the other end and then pull that wire right through. And here's what the other end looks like. You can see that little shiny metal piece down there. That's the actual wire snake. So now I'm just gonna tape this wire together and then just pull it right through. Make sure you don't forget that red wire as well. Right here, we're gonna be looking at the fuse panel and we're gonna be deciding which circuit we wanna tap into for that aux beam control panel. Basically, we only want this thing on when it's on the accessory, so we're gonna be tapping into the accessory circuit. So there it is on top. And I do have it hooked up to the uh, control panel here. And when I put the key in and turn it one time, you can see it's on. All right, you guys, I got pretty much everything buttoned up. Last step is to figure out where to mount this. I don't really want to use any of the mounting hardware and drill holes into my vehicle. So what I'm going to do is probably just going to place it right here. It looks like it fits perfectly. Um, earlier I mentioned you should have gotten the six mount one and that's because it would have fit perfectly in here and not cut over into here. Um, but it still is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. And I actually found some of this Velcro in my drawer. So I'm gonna be using this. So that way I can uh, pull it out if I need to. All right, you guys, we are pretty much done. Everything is on, all the stickers are in. And I wanted to show you guys what's going on here. So we can turn on the key. That's how it looks like. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is there is a little sensor right here that will detect the brightness outside and it will make this brighter and dimmer based off of you know, if you have light outside, because there's really no way to control the lighting here. And you can see, you can press roof right here to turn on the roof LED. Here's the bumper one. This one is the rear. This is my amber one in the rear. And then this one is my backup lights or the white ones in the rear. And then all of these here are blank and I would really like to have my fridge in here, but because there's a couple problems with this thing where you cannot leave this on for constant 12 volts. Even though you have it on here, if you turn off the keys and turn it back on, you'll see it still stays off. And that means that I cannot run my fridge or my HIDs on here because I always need those on. I don't want somebody driving my car and having to fiddle with this to get the headlights to turn on. So that's kind of one of the downsides of this system in that you can't have constant 12 volts to the system at all. So I have to go and rewire my fridge as well as my CB radio. I mean, you could put your CB radio here. It's probably not that big of a deal. But for something like my fridge and also my solar panels, I wouldn't want to have to turn it on every time. And with the keys out of the ignition, that's definitely not something I'm going to want for my fridge or my solar panel. So here you can see I can turn everything on. And then this off on here, you can actually turn everything off and everything on. So it does have some concept of memory here. But unfortunately, this remote only works when the key is in the accessory position. And you can see it's not on right now. That's because the key is out. But you can see I cannot turn this on without the key. All right, you guys, that pretty much wraps up the whole install of the Oxbeam power control. As you can see, it was relatively simple and didn't really require any extra things, which is kind of nice. You could have easily used the included power cords that came with the kit. I just chose to use my breaker instead. But all in all, everything was pretty good outside of those little quirks that I mentioned, which I'm going to have to go and redo some of my wiring for my fridge and also my solar panel. It's not the end of the world and it does make wiring things a lot easier. I'm already thinking about my next mods. I might be getting some rock lights or maybe some ditch lights. Who knows, we'll see. But with that switch panel, it's gonna make it so much easier to install and so much cleaner in the cab. Like I mentioned before, this was sent out to me by Oxbeam. They reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to review this product. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. I'd probably give it four stars out of five. 
If somehow there's a way to make it always on on some of those circuits, that would really raise my score up to 4.5 because that would really eliminate the old system that I had in there. But overall, I'm still pretty happy with the system and I definitely recommend you guys get one too. And as always guys, I'll leave links to everything down in the video description below so that way you guys can find it easier. I also have a coupon code for 10% off on this system. So if you guys are interested in this system, definitely check that coupon code down below and also a link to this specific product. I'll leave links to both the six and the eight circuit system. As I mentioned, if I were to do it again, I'd probably get the six circuit just so that I can get a cleaner fit on that driver side. Well guys, if you guys have any questions about the video, make sure you guys let me know down in the comments below. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, hit that notification bell. And if you guys like videos like this, don't forget to check out other videos on my channel. As always guys, have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next video.